into a run from the Buckeyes. It's 49-30 for seven minutes. Berger kicks it out to Moore McNeil in the far corner, guarded closely by Harris. Harassed. Moore McNeil picks up a dribble, skips it over to Garazone. She'll launch a near side three. That's no good. And the rebound, it's going to be a foul on the floor. It looks like that's going to go against, yes, it's on Mikola Shikova. So it's going to stay with Indiana. 49-34, Ohio State has responded. And we expected that from the Buckeyes. 7-0-2, Berger inbound it from the baseline, gets it to Holmes, the handoff. Berger fires a mid-range shot, and it goes in. Death taxes Grace Berger from the mid-range. I like that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Music quite this, quite a lot this season. Ricky Harris finds it over to Mike Sell, steps out beyond the three-point line. Now finds Mikola Shakova, knocks in the three. This is a huge response from Ohio State. They're down 51-37. That is now six points for Mikola Shakova. Six and a half to go here in this third quarter. Here zone finds Parrish, now over to Berger on the far side. Gets to her spot, launches another mid-range shot and gets it again. Berger's got 15. Ohio State looking to respond once again. They've made their last four field goals with six minutes to go here in this third. Inside to Mikolashkova, the handoff to McMahon. Back to Mikolashkova, fakes the three, gets it outside. Harris launches one, that's no good. Rebound goes away to Gary's zone. Hoosiers back the other way, and Berger will slow it down for Indiana. I understand that you've hit a couple, but that isn't a shot you want to fall in love with again. Berger drives all the way, slicing and dicing, and she can't get the layup to fall. Ohio State's got the rebound. Harris on the near side. Now to Mike Sell attacks. Gets it inside to Theory. Great job by Sidney Parrish. But Theory controls it and lays it up and in. 53-39 with five and a half to go. Mer McNeil hands it off to Berger. She'll look to Morin for the play call. And she has it on the far side. Guarded by Theory. Hands it off to Garzone. Now to Parrish. Mer McNeil looking to attack. Going all the way to the basket. Lays it up. No good. Great defense by McMahon and a defensive foul on Mackenzie Holmes trying to go after the loose ball. I believe that is her second. It will send Mackenzie Holmes to the bench and Lily Meister checks in as well as Sarah Scalia in for Sydney Parrish. Somewhat of a frustration foul there from Holmes. Buckeyes finally starting to get in a groove in this second half. Five minutes. Buckeyes have narrowed the lead down to 14. Mike Sell, she's going to attack all the way. Floater, no good off back guy, and the rebound away to Garazone. It was tipped away. Great defense, and they're going to call that, I believe, out of bounds on Ricky Harris. Harris is going to argue the call. There will be a timeout on the floor. Our first media timeout of the second half. Holmes will check back in for Indiana whenever we come back from break. Racing Louisville's Savannah DeMello has exploded onto the scene in just her second year with the club leading the team in every major statistical category. But it hasn't always been smooth sailing for DeMello. I think I took it for granted, kind of when I'm playing. I had never been injured before. When it's kind of taken away from you, you just realize how much more you want it. During DeMello's sophomore season at USC, a torn Achilles put her out for the rest of the season and the year after. But after the injury, it was really hard. An Achilles is a hard injury to come from or come back from and um, I was in a pretty good spot and then just kind of going from 100% to 0% was pretty uh, gut-wrenching but it kind of just made me hungrier to come back. And that she did. DeMello was drafted by Racing Louisville in 2022 and made an immediate impact turning into one of the club's most talented young pieces. An MVP caliber season has turned heads from around the league delivering eight goals and three assists across all competition, dominating every time she steps onto the pitch. Finally, sitting in her home on a summer afternoon, DeMello got the call. I just called to let you know that uh, we selected you for the roster for the World Cup. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't joke with something like that. <laughs> I think my heart just like kind of sank for a little bit just because it was so like it's truly and it's honestly something that hasn't really hit me I don't think fully yet but um it just like time kind of stops for a little bit oh my gosh congratulations
But even though DeMello will be representing the Stars and Stripes at the World Cup, the city of Louisville will always be her first love. I just um, want to make the city and the team and everybody proud. And um, I think just being me and going out there and just being who I am on and off the field is going to do just that. Hayden Smith, WDRB Sports. Indiana survives and knocks off Michigan State, ends the Spartan season in a dramatic fashion here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The Hoosiers win 94 to 85 here at Target Center. And the Hoosiers were down as much as 12 points there in that second quarter, fought back and won this game. The Hoosiers held the Spartans to just one three-pointer in the entire second quarter after Michigan State shot very well in the first half, over 50%. Uh, incredible halftime adjustments by Terry Warren and the Hoosiers will move on to the semifinal round tomorrow. WIUX will have the broadcast for that game at 1.30 Central Time, 2.30 Eastern Standard Time. They play a rivalry matchup, the winner of Michigan or Ohio State tomorrow. Hayden Smith for WIUX, thank you all for tuning in. Welcome back to Hardwood Hysteria, the first round of the NBA playoffs is in full swing and there's more drama than ever and let's get into it. I'm Hayden Smith and alongside me I've got Gabe Fenster and Noel Ferry. Guys, let's get into this. First series we're going to talk about is Miami and Milwaukee. Noel, I'll start with you. How big of an impact has injuries had on this series? I think the most interesting thing I've seen and seen debates on is Draymond Green. You know, obviously he's had some tough fouls in this series and throughout the season. How big of a role do you think he still plays on this Golden State team? Uh, it's a huge role. I mean, people, I think they overlook and, un, and underappreciate who Draymond Green is. Draymond and Golden State, they don't win these titles without him. He is one of the biggest reasons why they have been able to win these championships. And it really starts on the defensive end and his leadership. You saw it um, even before Game 4 happened. He went up to Steve Kerr before Game 4 and told him, if I need to come off the bench, I can do it because it's what best for the team. Kevon Looney had an incredible game three. Same with guys like Jordan Poole. Uh, they all had incredible game threes. And you go into game four, and he has that ability to come off the bench. And then they switch him on to De'Aaron Fox, and it was a huge switch. Grace Washburn crosses the start finish line. Three laps to go, 97 laps complete. Melanzana looking to go back to back. What a way to get your first two wins if they're able to do so. Teeter makes the exchange. It's going to be Cecilia Ball on the bike there for Teeter. But as of right now, it looks like it's Melanzana's race to lose. Zana enters turn three, and they're booking it. Out into turn four. It'll be two laps to go by the time she crosses the start finish line. Teeter. They're zooming into turn three, into turn four. Looks like Melanzana might make an exchange on the far side of the track. This is the most crucial exchange that Melanzana will have throughout this entire race. Cecilia Ball for Teeter, looking to track them down. She's got a lot of work to go. Two laps to go. Lap and a half for Teeter to catch Melanzana makes the tap. It's a bike-to-bike -bike exchange, and it's exchanged cleanly. Teeter looking to track them down in the back straightaway. They're zooming ahead. Allison Edgar looking to track down Melanzana. It's Grace Washburn, right flag in the air. Melanzana's got the lead in during turn one. They're looking to go back-to-back. Teeter's got a long way to go. Zana in the turn two. They're ahead by seven seconds over Teeter. Zana entering the back stretch, going into turn three. They're looking to go back to back. Coming into turn four. Make it two in a row. Melanzana wins the little 500. 